video is part of the September 25th remote teaching session and it continues our exploration of visualization techniques. Uh, in the last videos we talked about how we visualize points and then we took a quick detour to talk about the concept of gradation and if we're using values to attach sizes, shapes, or colors to show degrees of change, right? So low home sale prices versus high. We talked about how we set those breaks, how we determine what is going to be the lightest color versus what's going to be the darkest versus what's going to be sort of the, the upper value versus the lowest. Um, this video, I'm going to take those elements we learned and simply apply them to uh, polygon. You know, I separate polygon and point because though many of the techniques we talk about are similar, there's a couple of things you can do with points like a heat map that you can't do with this. Um, and there's a couple of things you can do with polygons like a, a dot density map that you're not going to do with sort of points. You know, so there's overlap, certainly, um, but also nuance. So if I picked uh, neighborhoods and, and came up to appearance again, the first thing I always want to introduce and remind everybody is uh, one thing polygons do have different is this transparency, right? It makes more sense than a point, which is just sort of sitting there. But this is where you can control that. And, and it's an important thing because it allows you to sort of layer this on top of another element and you can quickly and easily visualize, um, you know, what's going on on below it. So definitely a, a, a thing to play around with with uh, with polygons that probably you won't do so as much with points or others. Um, but knowing that, I want you to come over here to symbology and see that things are roughly the same, right? We have our unique values, we have our graduated colors, um, and then we have these proportional symbols and dot density, which are the things that are, are a little bit newer. Um, you know, but I can come in here and a unique value and, and you know the neat thing here is I could this is one thing I can do and often do with polygons is I could take the name as my unique value there's gonna be a lot of them and what it would do here is if it doesn't crash my computer it would give a different sort of color to each unique sort of name so if I wanted to, to really visualize to somebody you know hey everything here is a little different it has a different name I, I could accomplish it like that uh, I can't remember if there's anything else here that is sort of a good field. I think most of these are um, are different, but I did have one I think that was like district name, so I could try that, and that'll sort of show the breakdown of those that are you know, central northeast, lower far northeast, so on and so forth, and, and they'll be clustered a little bit more by geography, right? So now they're breaking themselves into these categories. Nothing crazy new or any of that jazz. Graduated colors are going to be the same. Um, as we had before, you're still going to have your sort of break, um, you know, uh, and you're still going to sort of pick a field and, and graduate the colors by it, you know, but some things people like to do here that I always think is really interesting is like, let's say I, I graduated by burglaries and then I picked a quantile, right? That, that sort of even break. So again, I've got my burglaries here and I'm breaking it into five categories you know, the, the lower 20th percentile versus the upper 20th percentile. And this isn't a false story, but, you know, some of you may notice that there's certainly a correlation between the size of the polygon and the number of burglaries. And that's true, right? I mean, these neighborhoods are much larger. There's a lot of sort of homes there, so you probably have a better chance of having more burglaries. Really what we'd want to do is do this thing called normalizing. And so if you have a, a denominator-like field, like here we maybe have population, or we could even have one that was number of homes if we had it. Now what it will do is it'll divide burglaries by population, right? So it's effectively going to give me number of burglaries per person. And even though those numbers are harder to read, it's a different story, right? There's actually more burglaries per person in these sort of neighborhoods right here, right? Your risk of being burglarized is higher there because the number as it relates to the number of people is different than, than it up in here. So just an important one to consider when you're playing around, um, especially with uh, polygonal symbology, is that you want to take advantage of that normalization. You know, one of the things I've always liked about uh, polygons is if you don't like the color, you can also sort of break out this, this symbol uh, concept as well here. 
um, where you would uh, come in. Eh, I hate that it went to join count, and I'll just go down here and I'll pick burglaries again. And you know, I don't even I won't normalize it this time out of pure laziness. But now what it's doing is it'll keep the background, right? It'll keep the background of the neighborhood, and you can change the color of that. But it puts a shape in the middle for visual size. I will not be with you 99% of the time that you are using Arc in your career, so I don't know if this is the most appropriate way to visualize your data. You may decide this is what your client needs to see or your group. I just want to let you know that you can vacillate between colors and sizes of um, shapes when you're playing around with polygons. The things here that are new, and I'll do chart and then dot density first is is you can also sort of make a, a, a shape uh, in the middle and hopefully this doesn't crash my computer here uh, to represent and maybe that's what I'll do here is I'll make a pie chart in each one and I did a sort of that one was a bar chart and the pie chart will have two symbols it'll have maybe the number who own and then the number who rent and they'd be two different colors they push themselves in they'd set a background and again it's often difficult to look at this unless you're sort of more zoomed in because it's trying to sort of map so many at once but now we can start to visualize things a little different right I can start to see the neighborhoods that have a lot of renters versus a lot of owners right here and I can begin, you know, saying, okay, maybe it's not just a fixed size, but it should be sort of a sum of the fields. And then sort of I'll bring another value into this where I'm not simply seeing the breakdown between owners and renters, but I'm also sort of sizing my fields so that neighborhoods that have more overall, oh, Jesus, that was too much. I really screwed that one up. Might need to do a, an appearance compensation to sort of play around with this. It just simply means that proportionally one field is sort of way... Uh, way larger than the others. I sort of regret this decision and doing and going on this course of action now and, and we'll, I'm going to just, I'm going to, oh dear, I'm abandoning ship. Abandoning ship and coming back. But my point is, you know, if you had a little more time and were a little bit more attentive to the scale of your data, you could theoretically use that as a way to add sort of another layer here. But it, just a different way of looking, right? And quickly I can visually see where renters are more sort of dominant. And I can accomplish that same thing with dot density. You remember we did this for sort of part, uh, I really quickly showed it to you in, um, in the video uh, last week when we were looking at joining fields. And I'm going to have, and I think we also did it for sort of the redlining, and I'm going to have it be a part of um, the take-home assignment this week too, or sorry, the take-home exercise, because it's just a cool tool. What it does here is it takes fields, and I'll again do I'll do owners and I'll do renters, and it attaches a random dot, right? This is not saying this is where this dot actually lives. That's not how the census sort of works. It's saying within the values that I have, and maybe I'll make the dot one to one is a little rough. I'll make maybe one to ten. Each dot's gonna be two size. The owners are green, the renters are pink. Each dot represents 10 renters or 10 sort of owners here. Maybe I'll make the, this an easier color to really differentiate as a nice sort of blue to contrast against that so it jumps out. Right, and so I can now start to visually see when you come into certain neighborhoods where the ownership sort of picks up contrary to others or where sort of rental density tends to be much higher. It's just randomly putting a dot in some place to represent I'm an owner or I'm a renter, right? We come into University City and you see sort of a much higher rental density closer to campus and then as you sort of get out of the homes, uh, owners have it more. It's a really cool way of sort of, uh, you know, visualizing and, and, and looking at your um, at your at your data here and you know definitely one that we'll continue to return to throughout the semester but can only really be done when you're looking at at point based or at polygon based symbology so that's polygons right i mean what set it apart transparency um dot density you know really being the two that make it a little bit different
uh, but also charts and graduated symbols and colors uh, similar to, to points are at your disposal to use.